Thank you very much, and it, it's a pleasure to be here. And it's actually my first time presenting in this Highland Disco format, so I hope you hear me well. Um, I want to show you today a real practical application of artificial intelligence in cardiology. There is a lot of research on AI in the space of cardiology, but not a lot of tangible things that you can actually try out and uh, play around with today. Here are my conflicts. So I'm a chief medical officer and co-founder of Powerful Medical. And to introduce the topic, I always li like to start with these two patients. So these are two ECGs of two different patients. And I like to ask, what do these two ECGs have in common? And uh, I can be the obvious one to point out that these are both 12 lead ECGs and the ECG is uh, on a blue grid. But what if, I, what if we forget about the ECG for a second and look at the coronary angiographic outcomes? The patient on the left is a patient with an acute occlusion of the left circumflex, and the patient on the right is, an, is a patient of a, uh, with an acute occlusion of a left circumflex. So why are we calling the patient on the left a STEMI patient while the patient on the right is a non-STEMI under the current paradigm? And this is what the problem of the current paradigm is. The ACS and the ECG changes are very dynamic, and the current paradigm really focuses on one dominant feature of acute coronary occlusion, which is ST elevation. And if you look at how the standard chest pain pathways identify these patients, for roughly 30%, we trigger the so-called STEMI alert. And this is frequently uh, associated with false positives based on who's triggering the STEMI alert. This could be very benign ECG manifestation of ST elevation like early repolarization or LVH, or more co challenging clinical scenarios like hyperkalemia or pericarditis. What's, uh, so to summarize sort of the STEMI pathway, we have a lot of false positives, anywhere between 30 to 50%. What's maybe clinically more relevant is the patients that we today call non-STEMIs. And we've shown, and this has been corroborated by many meta-analyses, that one-third of the patients that we today call non-STEMI actually have an acutely occluded culprit artery at the angiography, the same pathology that STEMI is trying to identify. And if we go back to the, those two patients, same underlying pathology of an occluded left circumflex, but a different ECG at presentation, this is what their survival will look like. So the purple curve is the STEMI, typical STEMI patients with a typical STEMI ECG, and the red is, are the patients without typical ST elevation on the index ECG. And you can see that uh, the mortality is significantly different. Patients without typical ST elevation presenting with coronary occlusion actually have a two times higher all-cause one-year mortality. And we believe that this is on the basis of uh, delayed in interpretation at the, at the first point of contact and significant delays to coronary angiography that these patients experience. And to no surprise, the guidelines recommend several STEMI-equivalent ECG patterns to detect, uh, to improve the detection of coronary occlusion. However, these patterns are not uh, ideally detected at the first point of contact. So to solve this, we've developed an AI model that doesn't look at the traditional STEMI or non-STEMI way of looking at the ECG, but we've trained a deep neural network that asks the underlying question, is this an ECG of a patient with an acutely occluded culprit coronary artery for whom we should trigger an immediate cath lab activation? And we've developed this model on over 18,000 ECGs from over 10,000 patients, and I don't have to explain how deep learning works on the digital health stage, but the beauty of deep learning is that the, the uh, model is not explicitly coded with features like, under, uh, like the standard ECG interpretation. So deep neural networks are able to find uh, deeper connections in the data and use much more parameters that are, m might not be humanly explainable to uh, correlate patients with coronary occlusion. We validated this model in an international cohort, and the primary endpoint was an angiographic one of uh, patients uh, needing emergent revascularization or patients with TIMI 0 to 1 flow. And we've used a large cohort of, of uh, all comer chest pain patients and acute myocardial infarction patients stemming from two U.S. sites and one European center. The, pri the primary outcome was met in 20% of these patients, and the mean age... Um, the mean age was 62 years of age. We've compared the AI model performance 
to the traditional STEMI criteria measurement on the ECG. This is the standard of care in many centers still. And ECG experts independently reviewing ECGs in a blinded manner. So they were blinded to the outcome of the patient. So essentially for every patient in the validation set, we had three votes. Uh, we had three votes based on the three methods. And as you can see, the model correlates very well with an AUC of 0 0.94 showing high predictive power in detecting an angiographic outcome of coronary occlusion. We've also performed subgroup analysis, showing the model performance across various demographic, electrocardiographic, and rhythm subgroups, often uh, making ECG interpretation in this cohort more challenging. I would just like to highlight two subgroups. So these are complex scenarios like tachycardia or atrial fibrillation causing many false positives. And in these, in these patients, uh, the model had a very high specificity. To summarize the performance, you can look at it uh, in a very simplistic manner. Our model is able to increase the sensitivity of detecting acute coronary occlusion, regardless of ST elevation, by two twofold compared to the standard of care at the same specificity. And this has been the most read publication since, since publishing in November 2023 in the European Heart Journal Digital Health. And ladies and gentlemen, a lot of papers and a lot of AI models actually end at this stage. And a publication showing its international validation. Um, however, we've decided to go one step further. So we wanted to really implement, and that's why I promised you today to see an implementation and, and a real world application of AI in cardiology. And we've paired this AI model. And if we, if we go back to sort of the clinical setting, this is a 12 ED CG how we would, and, and this is how we would actually find it in the, in the emergency department. And everyone in the emergency department, every emergency physician and paramedic and uh, nurse actually has a smartphone in, the po in their pocket. So what if they could just use the smartphone to capture a picture of this ECG, and within a couple of seconds, our ECG digitization pipeline is able to transform this into a fully digital waveform. Well, now we've just performed all the data ingestion steps necessary to run our newly developed AI model prospectively in an implemented fashion. And as I mentioned before, detecting coronary occlusion is not just about the ST segment, and this is the case for this ECG. So the patient on the left presenting with an ECG without typical ST elevation was still detected using our system because it uses more complex features. And as you can see here, it's looking at the reciprocal findings in AVL as a very dominant feature of coronary occlusion. We've implemented this model under what we call an AI augmented chest pain pathway, where all patients presenting to the uh, either the emergency department in the spoke center or direct in the hub center or emergency medical services actually get an AI screening uh, using our AI model, digitizing the ECGs at the first point of contact for an AI rule-in of coronary occlusion. And let's see uh, one case in action. This is, this is an ECG of a 58-year-old male patient presenting on a at 5 p.m. on a Friday during a public holiday with six out of 10 chest pain. They record this ECG in a spoke center where the cardiologist is not available. Fortunately, the center is using our uh, AI model and it digitizes this ECG and within a couple of seconds, the nurse directly in triage is able to detect coronary occlusion and trigger a STEMI alert. And these were the andrographic findings. A fully occluded proximal LAD on a Friday afternoon during a public holiday, we were able to maintain an AI to balloon time, which we coined the term of 37 minutes. And a lot of the times you will hear when talking about AI, this black box nature of AI. So AI is, is, is using very nonlinear features to derive these, these predictions. However, we can actually backtrack the AI model's uh, uh, calibration we can look at what are the relevant leads the AI model sees and calls diagnostic, and what are also the dominant features using saliency heat maps. And on this case, you can actually look, uh, you can actually see three leads being very dominantly highlighted, V2, V3, and V4. And the key features that the AI model used to detect coronary occlusion in this case being the T and the QRS complex preceding it. 
And this is actually one of the STEMI equivalent ECG feature features that have been uh, added in the recent ESC guidelines, which uh, are a manifestation of broad T waves uh, with, a, with a smaller QRS amplitude um, preceding it. And AI can help us really define and uh, find these patients with these STEMI equivalent ECG features. So to summarize, AI can assist us with the early identification of STEMI equivalents with an occluded culprit artery that are frequently missed by traditional criteria. AI ECG interpretation has two times higher sensitivity at equal specificity compared to standard of care. And a smartphone-based AI-powered STEMI network can actually ensure the timely management of these STEMI equivalent patients. Explainable deep neural networks can actually educate us on STEMI equivalent ECG findings and can, can go beyond uh, the human understanding of the ECG. Thank you for your attention. Thank you.